everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks. And are you ready to uh, snatch the diamond? And that is because the 2000 Guy Ritchie film Snatch is currently doing a collaboration with World of Tanks where you can complete 50 stages of a battle pass to be able to get a variety of crew members, some which actually come with unique voice acting and the opportunity to get catch a brand new tank which is called the Nomad. Although uh, the eagle-eyed of you might be thinking that this thing looks exactly like a charioteer. And that's because it is a charioteer. It's statistically identical to the tier 8 British tech tree tank destroyer. But in today's video I'm going to be letting you know exactly whether a premium charioteer is worth getting your hands on. So before we get stuck into the statistics, let's take a look at some of the extra features of the Nomad that you can be able to get your hands on. Firstly, you do actually have the option on the Nomad of having it without a style. And without a style, all you're going to get on the front is Nomad, and then it looks identical to a Charioteer. Interestingly enough, if you do put on different paint jobs on this vehicle, you will see that the Nomad, uh, it remains on the barrel. So at least you will have a little bit of difference, but to all intents and purposes, you could make it look exactly like a charioteer outside of that. Now the featured style, the 3D style that you can be able to get from the battle pass called Big City Life is about as much of a, it pays homage to uh, Snatch, right? You've got Bullet Tooth Tony on the front, Bonjour indeed. Got Boris the Blade, heavy as good, heavy as reliable on the side. Yes, we've got ourselves a butcher's cleaver, a gun, some boxing gloves from where I guess Brad Pitt fought it out. Briefcase, which is, I wonder if I go inside if it's going to be full of things. No, it's unfortunately not. Then we've got Fan Frankie Four Fingers. I am not in Rome. I am in a rush. And then we have Turkish and we have Tommy on the side. It's for protection. Yes, indeed. And then we've even got the the, the ra rabbit here. Have I made myself clear, boys? It's a shame they didn't have Bricktop in the game. There's a barbecue on the back, literally, with some bangers there. Extra little things like this piggy head on the back as greedy as a pig and interestingly enough when you put the uh, the special skin on it says replica on the front and then uh, do you like dogs with the diamond in the faithful pooch and if we go inside are there any easter eggs on the inside unfortunately not that's your lot so the other exciting part is that of course you're going to be able to get all of the crew members as you saw on the vehicle but there are two new sets of custom voice acting bullet tooth tony sounds like this <laughs> that courses through my veins. Let's make sure it stays that way. Anyone who tells me porky pies today porky pies. is going to get a nice gift from Blitz and Tony. Porky pies, mate. I wouldn't tell you porky pies. And also, there is Bolas, the Blade, Yurinov. Believe me, I have seen far more formidable opponents than this. You know, there is a reason why they call me Boris the Bullet Dodger. <laughs> Boris the Blade is ready to cut down everyone who stands in my way. That sounds pretty good. What tank would you put Bullet Tooth Tony or Boris the Blade in? Let me know. Unfortunately, there's no custom voice acting for Frankie Four Fingers, played by Benicio Del Toro, and also for Turkish or Tommy. And just to clarify, if you want to get Boris the Blade's custom voice acting, then you are going to have to purchase him in the store. It's 5,000 gold a pop. That is pretty darn expensive. Although you do get yourself 20 50% extra credit boosters and 10 five times experience missions. So if you are the biggest fan of the film Snatch and you're a World of Tanks player, well, this is going to be the one for you. Or is it? It is a charioteer after all. So let's compare the charioteer to the other tier eight premium British turreted tank destroyer, the G-Saw 1008 and also the Scorpion G. The Charioteer has pretty darn good damage per minute for tier eight. It's a little bit worse than the Scorpion G, but massively better than the G-Saw. But when you consider that the G-Saw has an autoloader and can dump out 1,280 damage within six seconds, yeah, that more than makes up for it. One thing that's really nice about the Charioteer is, are the, the kinds of ammunition that it can carry with its 105 millimeter gun. It can hit for 390 with its APCR rounds that have amazing shell velocity at 1,478 and have 268 millimeters of penetration with that. That kind of trumps a lot of the other tank destroyers at tier eight, even with the Scorpion getting 246. However, it's really when you load high explosive rounds with the Charioteer that's very special. 
Now your alpha damage goes up to 480, just shy of the Scorpion, but that rockets your damage per minute super high, but you only have 210 millimeters of pen on these premium rounds. Now that's really nice for mid-armored tanks to be able to pump up that alpha and pump up that damage per minute, but unfortunately that means that the Charioteer, or the Nomad in this case, doesn't have access to very high penetration rounds, which means that this tank can really suffer in tier 9 and tier 10 games, or even when you're playing against tier 8 tanks with very, very good armor that other tank destroyers could be able to make fun of. Another thing that sucks is having this 105mm caliber gun means that you can't overmatch plates like on a BZ-176 roof, for example. So now onto the gun handling. It's not great news here, if we're honest. 2.4 seconds aim time worse than the G-Saw and the Scorpion, 0.35 accuracy worse than the G-Saw and the Scorpion, and 0.28 when moving dispersion and when turning the tank as well. 0.1 when turning the turret isn't too bad. So I would thoroughly recommend that you focus on getting smooth ride on this vehicle over something like Snapshot, but Snapshot will still be useful. Without a shadow of a doubt, the best thing about this vehicle is the 10 degrees of gun depression, allowing you to work a ridge line very, very well, making this tank more of a medium than a tank destroyer within that regard. Now onto mobility, 52 forwards, not impressive. 20 backwards is pretty good. The power to weight ratio is decent. It's the same as the Scorpion G in this example, but the ground resistances are literally half of the Scorpion, which makes this thing truly feel more like a Cromwell, although a Cromwell that's limited to 52 kilometers an hour forwards. One thing, however, that definitely doesn't feel like a medium tank is the vehicle's turret traverse at 18 degrees. That's really not going to work out for you, and you're not going to quickly re-engage your tanks to your left or your right. Another thing that really sucks about this vehicle is the armor. It's just 60 at the front and 30 on the turret. This thing can easily get penned by high explosive rounds, and you are not bouncing anything. And add to that 1,050 hit points, this does not give you very much durability at all, and some tanks at, towards the top tiers are going to be one-shotting you. However, when we take a look at the vehicle's camo, it's literally double of the Scorpion G, which does make you rather sneaky. This thing can work a bush very well, and because it is a Cromwell hull, it's not the tallest of tanks, allowing you to hide wherever you want. And because the vehicle has 370 meters view range, if you use a premium consumer ball, you have all the field mods and good crew skills, you can kind of get away without using coated optics on some maps in this tank. And even free to play players with coated optics will be able to forego using binoculars, which allows this thing to be more rapid at working bush lines, which is where this tank is in its environment. Crew-wise, the Charioteer has a pretty annoying loadout. You have a commander who is also the gunner and a loader who is the radio operator. This means that no tier 10 tank destroyer is actually going to work well in your Charioteer Nomad, which means that you might want to end up actually recruiting an entire new crew for the vehicle, or at least focus on having a dedicated commander or but definitely a dedicated loader, as you will need to have situational awareness on this tank to be able to get the most out of its view range advantage. So crew skills wise, you want to have brothers in arms on this vehicle, definitely focus on concealment before repairs. And honestly, with a tank like this, you've got so few hit points and so little armor, you could almost just not have repairs at all on the crew. Definitely have recon on your commander. On your loader, you really want to have everything on this vehicle. Brothers in arms, concealment, you definitely want to have intuition to make sure you good use of the Hess shells on this vehicle as well as as well as situational awareness before you've got four skills on this tank. It's kind of useless with regards to your radio operator. On your driver, brothers in arms, concealment, off-road driving, and after that, a smooth ride. Everything else is pretty much optional. And on your gunner, I definitely recommend having brothers in arms, concealment, snapshot, but Probably more importantly, I'll take designated target before that. And this tank can do well with Deadeye, at least when you're pending your APCR rounds. Equipment wise on this vehicle, I would recommend two builds. One with gun rammer, vents, and also with coated optics. This is going to be for those maps where you want to have your view range at a decent level. And even without a premium consumable, you will be able to get 460 meters view range on this tank. And with a premium consumable, your view range is going to be very healthy, indeed 482. For my second build on this tank, I want to be a little bit more aggressive. I'm gonna be taking gun rammer, vents, and I'm going to be taking a rotation device on this vehicle. That will allow me to have better gun handling for snapshotting on city maps. And you'll still be able to get 438 meters view range with regular equipment. If you were to take bond vents on this tank and you have a great crew and a premium consumable, you could even get away with just not using coated optics probably on any of your maps or even take an exhaust to be extra cheeky. 
you'd be able to get your camera rating up to a very healthy amount that way. Field mods wise, this tank is really simple. Firstly, take the suspension durability, which improves your ground resistances. Next, improve the accuracy, then take the view range. And if you're looking for a slot bonus, I'd recommend the scouting on this vehicle because you can either put your vents in it or alternatively your coated optics. But you know what? I think that's quite enough chatting and considering that this is not a new vehicle, it's just a charioteer. I thought that I would be playing it live today for YouTube because I've played the charioteer a lot over the years. So uh, I don't really need to play this vehicle to tell you how good it is. So I thought I'd just hopefully show you how good it is with the gameplay. Although whether that remains to be seen on Paris, we'll have to uh, have a little bit of a thought. Also, I've been taking some time off World of Tanks recently. So I haven't played on Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday. So this is literally going to be my first game in like four days. So um, maybe I'll be scraping off a little bit of the tank rust. We'll see. Although this vehicle doesn't look rusty. Also... Great. I thought we would also have the, uh, the voice acting turned up as well. So you can be able to check the uh, Boris the Blade voiceover and we can we can judge it for ourselves inside this review. So when you're playing the Charioteer, what you want to do is just find a ridgeline, find a bush and work it. That is all you have to do. And then use your intuition switch. I'm going to knock this, this tree over so I get a little bit of cover here. Use your intuition switch and then hopefully, boop, there we go. What are you going to say, Boris? He didn't say anything. He's just, just being quiet. Should we turn his volume up? I think we should. Let's double my master volume, and then we'll have everything else apart from Boris. That sounds that that sounds brilliant, doesn't it? Okay, Boris louder than everything else. Sounds perfect, Boris the Blade. Um, so yeah, that's just what this tank does. Ten degrees of gun depression, wonderful. Just get yourself into a position and hopefully clap, and then uh, unfortunately don't uh, catch the projecto. One thing I'd like to clarify is these Hesh rounds actually have really good shell velocity as well. 1,178 meters. Ooh, why didn't I see that? 1,700, uh, 1,178 meters a second shell velocity is wonderful. But these APCR rounds are fabulous as well. So really, I, I cannot stress enough just how nice the ammunition on the Charioteer, aka the Charioteer Nomad feels. Oh, it's beautiful. I have to admit, I do like what Wargaming have done with the style. It's very like boys. Um, if anyone remembers the boys collaboration with the, uh, the T... What was it called? A T42? T43? I don't know. Blimey, no. All these blimmin' patterns going into the game. That was pretty much uh, Wargaming just taking a vehicle and dropping it down. It's almost like just taking a pattern and dropping it down a tier. Looks like my team are being quite aggressive. Now, this is where the, the Charioteer can kind of struggle a little bit, honestly. Uh, because getting forwards, this tank is very lightly armoured. And um, while you do have that kind of like opportunity to load Hesh and go for like the alpha damage boom, it can be really ugly uh, with getting caught out with having absolutely no protection on the tank. Are we going to get our first kill for the Nomad? No, not today. Not today. Okay, so it looks like the enemy are towards the center. I might swing by and try and get that kind of line of fire. Man, Paris, this is just such a disappointing map. But then again, the Charioteer, aka in this case, the Nomad, um, is one of those kinds of vehicles where it doesn't really matter what kind of a map you get it on, honestly. It's just wonderful on all maps. Am I spotted? Oh no, our tracks are damaged. Enemy armor is damaged. God, he sounds like he's, um, he's in need of a coffee, if you know what I mean. Goodness gracious. I can't believe I got spotted through there. Was that the, uh, it must have been the T-33 or maybe simply just caught me through the side. Am I dead? I think I'm very dead. I think I'm very dead. I can't believe I got away with that. I'm quite surprised these guys are managing to spot me right now. Uh, but they are. I guess there's just a gap in the bushes that I'd never really anticipated. I guess what I could do is just drive around here and then hopefully not get spotted using this lower part and then go up through the bushes here and then start to ding this T-32. That could work. Um, yeah, this gun again, really I'd need gold to be able to reliably challenge the T-32 in the turret. Or even not, because the T-32 is an absolute behemoth. But I can easily catch his upper hull here. So hopefully, there we go. Did he just say penetration, but in a, the, a, a Boris accent? Great, I like it. That's wonderful. Maybe we're going to get our first kill. Should we go for it now? You just cannot stop destroying them. Cool. What kind of a tank are you going to put Boris in? Are you going to put them in the, uh, 
You're going to put them in the Nomad, train up a whole new crew for your Nomad. I think I'll get a side shot on this Type 63. Oh, maybe not. Should I go on the hunt? On the hunt! He's got a cross, right? He's got a cross, right? Yes, he has. Oh. I'm Bullet Dodger, and I am Bullet Giver. I am Bullet Dodger, and I am Bullet Giver. I like it, I like it. Looks like there's a regular charioteer on the enemy team. It's always interesting when Wargaming uh, do put in, should we say, just a clone as a premium tank. Because surely it can't be unbalanced, right? Is this like World of Tanks perfection? Wargaming just putting in premium vehicles as effective... Premium, well, putting in tech tree tanks, sorry, as the premiums. Oh. Hopefully he doesn't high roll. Yay, I should get him. Bloop. Good. Got them. We did. We got them, Boris. Doing good. So this is just quintessential charioteer stuff, really. You drive around, you get your shots, you put your put your rounds in, you pick up three kills, you do 2,000 damage. It's not a bad tank at tier 8. I don't think it's anything special. I don't think it's anything spectacular. It's not a bad tank at tier 8. It's very solid, very flexible. If you know how to play a medium, you will do well in this tank. Play it like a medium tank with a big gun. If you know how to play tank destroyers, it's got a good enough gun. It's definitely not like a high alpha damage hitter, right? It's not going to be like a like a Scorpion or an Su-130 PM. Those tanks have big guns. They hit hard. They don't require you to fire premium to do extra damage. And they have more than enough penetration when you don't get into a nice matchup to still be fairly vicious. Whereas this tank, on the other hand, it's okay in these nice matchup environments, but I will warn all of you with the Charioteer, when you do get against tier 9 and tier 10 tanks, the fact that you're capped out at 268 millimeters of pen might be quite alarming. All right, full disclosure, I just played a second game on Overlord. I basically got caught like a greedy little pig by an EBR, and I got toasted on a ridgeline. So well played to the, uh, the EBR on the enemy team. Probably had a good sweaty setup and a vision system. I got caught awkwardly. So let's give it a second go. All right. Well, when I say a second go, let's give it a third go. But the second go for the live YouTube video. I know it's it's cheating, but honestly, you don't want to sit me. You want to see me sit there for uh, five minutes on a ridge line and then just get caught. It was awful. Okay. So now we're playing on Ghost Town. When I'm playing on Ghost Town, uh, there's a couple of ways that I could play this tank. Number one would be try and be sneaky, make my way down the east. But I think making my way down the west is going to be the, the better play. With this vehicle, it's it's a fine line between playing it too aggressively and, and not. As I've said, it's basically... Back to my good old secret agent days. Secret agent days. Okay, Boris. Good for you. Um... So there's a fine line between playing it like a medium tank or playing it like a tank destroyer. You kind of want to blur the lines and play it a bit like both. The way that I've had success uh, on the charioteer for me is to just basically get on a ridge line. That is the best way to do it. Get on a ridge line and get going. That's how I would recommend that you play this vehicle. Okay, so where's the ridge line? Right here. Perfect bush for me to be able to use. Let's get there. Another position that I could use would be able to go down there in those bushes, but the light tanks are doing that, so I don't need to worry. I should have really be pre-aimed for that TNH 1000 there. That was a bit of a misplay by me. I honestly think another tank is going to come before I need to set up in that bush above me. I'm pretty sure another heavy will cross. Da, doesn't look like the LT actually had the vision. Okay, maybe no more tanks are crossing. So let's get up here into this bush. And yeah, when you got 10 degrees of gun depression, it's basically just about work in a bush, work in a ridge line, getting the ambush shot and then pulling back. That's all you've got to do in the charioteer. Ambush shot, pull back. Ambush shot, pull back. It's really that simple. And when you hit for 390, you don't really have to hit too many ambush shots and pull back. Another thing that's nice is that storing up that alpha damage for 390, unlike a, a medium tank, means that you... You don't really have to worry about the uh, the 10 second spotting. The 10 second spotting on a vehicle like this, which can be up to 15 seconds, you know, if they're using a directive. So watch out for that. Oh, it just it's just natural within the reload time. A bit like on a on a Manticore, for example. It's just natural to be able to reload inside that time. Oh, that Lorraine really wanted to go after that TVP. That's for sure. All right, now I'm a little bit worried. Like, am I really going to play like the medium tank role now where I advance? Oh, this is scary. Uh, maybe I should sit back and just not get toasted by these tank destroyers, but 
you know what? Also on this vehicle, I do feel like it's a tank that can hopefully outspot, take a few risks. They could be up in those bushes. I gotta hope that like the 28% uh, camera rating that I have on the move, even without an exhaust, is going to allow me to get into the corner. It actually does. And now what I hope is that the Ayanani's camera rating isn't quite so good. And so when they take a swing at him, that hopefully I'll spot. That's not the case. Doesn't look like anyone's actually up in these bushes. And so we can advance again. And this is when you're playing a very flexible vehicle. That you just have so much opportunity. Most tank destroyers wouldn't be confident enough to push forwards. And so if you're a cheeky player, you know me, I'm a very cheeky player. Uh, this might actually end up being the tank for you. All right, there's an RT. I'm going to load an HE shell here just to pretty much guarantee the frag on him. I got spotted I by someone else. I am, bullet giver. I am bullet dodger and I am bullet giver. Okay, I got spotted, which means there's definitely someone down in there. There has to be. That's the only way that I would have got spotted there. I'm going to try and cross, though. I'm going to try and cross. It's a spatuk, but I just felt like I wanted to cross. That was very bold. Uh, but I feel like now I'll actually be able to play. Whereas previously, if I sat there, I don't think I was going to be able to play. But this is still scary. That CS-52 Lease is trying to go after me. I don't want to get caught in this bush right now. He's aiming for me. He's aiming for me. He's aiming for me. Oh! Not, not today, friend. Okay, we're actually down by 2,000 hit points, which is a little alarming. Oh, they're going to start blind firing me here. Hopefully they don't blind fire me correctly, though. Come on, baby. That aim time's pretty long on the chariot here. But we get rewarded, and Boris tells us the enemy armor has been damaged, which is nice. Okay, this is where this tank sucks, because if I had gold rounds on a different TD, I could load gold rounds and go after this TS-5 from above. But I just can't do that with this tank. Guess I should go for the forehead right now. Not even a little scratch, says Boris. And now I'm in a bit of a precarious situation. See, it looks like there's just a few pixels on top of that tank that I can hit. Whoa. Enemy is hit. Well, good thing when you're accurate, right? You can hit those shots. This is really scary. This guy's not an idiot. He'll be able to blind fire me here. Nice. We got rid of him. And you can see that, like, forward play. It was a little bit risky, but it's actually ended up paying off quite a lot. Um... We're going to do an intuition switch and see if this scorpion's still in this bush. Is he in there? Oh, there's the Spatuk. Oh, this thing does very well against a Spatuk. Good old HE rounds. When you think about it, this vehicle's not too different to that TVP-100. But he is out. Boris Blade Strikes again. Boris Blade Strikes again. I'm a bit confused as to what I need to do right now. Um, that scorpion's clearly still in that dip. Could be able to kill me at a moment's notice. Yeah, he spotted me. Um, all right, what I have to do is I have to stay hidden for a little second. And then I actually have to drop down this slope. I have to get out of here. Hopefully without getting spotted from that location. This slope, you can actually make it down, but not all of the time. Oh, I don't want to crush myself live on YouTube, especially when I'm in such an exciting game now. Oh, 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 gosh darn it. Should have had the hit there on that Type 63. I'm going to have to give up that high ground location because I just don't think that I'm ever going to be able to get any shots from it. If there were bushes on the other side, maybe I could be able to make it work. I think what I should drop back, uh, should, what I should do is drop back, go after the IS-5, and then eventually I can hopefully help to dig out the uh, Scorpion G. Um, I'm going to tell my team, watch out. Uh, watch out, Scorpion, about... I said that in capitals. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. I'm going to make my way over here and try and deal with the IS-5 first. Uh, yeah, I think that's the best. So what you're seeing here, the mobility on the charioteer, aka the Nomad, is definitely not the best. It really isn't. Um, it's a little, little bit lame from that perspective. There are faster tank destroyers out there that can get around, but it's by no means slow. It's right in the middle. The charioteer, aka the Nomad, is good at everything it's not bad at anything but it's not great at anything so being a jack of all trades tank destroyer it can be a good thing it can be a bad thing quite often your team will be wanting to having a harder hitting su-130 pm but at other times your team might be quite happy to have like this uh, rogue jack of all trades 
especially when they need a light tank in a game of heavy tank destroyers. It's just whether you're going to be able to survive for that long <laughs> with absolutely no armor. Not the best of camos, not the worst of camos. Definitely not the best of hit points, though. Okay, I'm going to try and get a different angle. Oh, wow, there's the Lorraine. Come on, baby, that's mine. Well, it's not mine. It's the SU-130 PMs. The SU-130 PM is going for it. Oh, the S-1 actually advanced. Okay, that's interesting. Um, all right, I think what I have to do is I have to flank up behind the S-1 again. Yep, that's what I have to do. I have to flank up behind the S-1 again, I think. Did I just spot the Scorpion G? Somebody did. All right, that S1 is clearly going to go to those the bush windows again. I don't think he's going to push on. Hopefully we can turn this into get a turret situation. Whoa, the artillery just dealt with him. All right, I think I have to... This is so weird. It's been like there and back again, a uh, charioteer's tail. Uh, I have to flank up without getting spotted. If I get spotted there, it'll be a disaster. Uh... I go... I go from... I go from west. Oh, there he is. He's actually fired. He's not fired, though. Oh, look at that. There we go. It's as easy as that, boys and girls. Alright, well, I definitely wasn't the hero of this battle. I'd say the hero of this battle was the SU-130PM. He got six kills. I got two. But hopefully that shows you just how flexible... The charioteer is how flexible the nomad is it really is a lovely tank from that regard you're going to be able to go everywhere do everything be the tank that keeps the team together and so if you are a holistic player and you have mastered all of the roles of world of tanks your medium tank roles your tank destroyer roles your light tank roles if you can combine those three elements then the charioteer will probably be one of the uh, the best tier 8 tech tree tanks you'll ever play and while I'm not going to say that the Nomad is going to be the best of premium tanks you can't really go wrong with a tank like this. It's nice to be able to pick up our, our first ace tanker in the Nomad life of YouTube. So all in all the best way for us to take a look at how good a, a premium version of a charioteer is going to be is why don't we just take a look at the statistics for the charioteer that's already been in the game. How good is the charioteer doing compared to all of the other tank destroyers in world of tanks well it's towards the upper half with regards to win ratio but if we take a look at win rate difference again right in the middle towards the upper part so this is not a bad tank destroyer however keep in mind that all of the stats that you're seeing with 47.65% average win ratio will be down to people who have to grind the vehicle from stock and I can tell you the charioteer is a very painful tank to play stock as you have to grind through 45,000 experience to get an awful 20 pounder gun and then another 55,000 to be able to get the 105 millimeter that actually makes this tank special and so accordingly I expect the nomad is going to have a way better win ratio than this most likely ending up in the region of where the SU-130 and the scorpion are going to be and so is it worth it? Well, firstly, let me clarify. It is a battle pass. You could grind through all of it and be able to get this vehicle for 3,500 gold. However, to be able to get through 50 stages in two weeks when there are no bonus tanks inside this battle pass means that it is going to be quite a tall ask for all of you. And most of the people who get this vehicle are gonna pay three and a half thousand for the tank and they're going to have to spend up to 12,000 to skip through X number of stages. So if you aren't going to play World of Tanks a lot over the next two weeks, is this thing going to be worth the, like the 16,000 price tag that it could cost? No, it's really not. But if you aren't burnt out from World of Tanks, from playing through all of the Christmas period, and you do find yourself playing a lot, and you complete 30, 40 of the 50 stages, will it be worth spending 3,500 gold and then skipping the rest of the stages that you miss for 250 gold a pop. Yeah, probably. I'd probably say this vehicle's worth about 6,000 gold, maybe 8,000 tops. Wouldn't say it's more than that. And so how many stages could you skip with 8,000 gold if we also factor in the, the 3,500 price tag? About 18 stages is what I would recommend skipping. More than that, and I'm not sure it's really worth it. And I want to finish the video by giving a passing mention to such a bizarre 
collaboration. I would have never have thought the World of Tanks would be collaborating with, with Snatch, the film, just 24 years old. Don't get me wrong, it's a good film. It's just not something that I would ever think that World of Tanks in 2024 would be featuring in a battle pass. But you know what? I think it's cool. If Wargaming want to monetize the game this way, give all of the free-to-play players an opportunity to pick up uh, a lot of base rewards and give all the premium customers a load of extra things that they can be able to spend on as well as monetizing the game by effectively putting in a tech tree tank as a premium how can it how can it be wrong this is a win-win-win for the community a win-win-win for wargaming and while i don't think it's the coolest collaboration in the history or, or even the best most novel unique tank i think there can be worse ways for wargaming to create content and monetize their game Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for the Nomad review. Really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Let me know what you think about this tank in the comments down below and the collaboration between World of Tanks and Snatch. Do you think it's really cool? Do you think it's really lame? Will you get yourself the Nomad or could you not care about this tank? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.